I'm the Gentleman Wake, and in this episode, we take a look at what might be my favorite deck of last year, the Devils in the Details deck, produced by Riffle Shuffle and designed by Wittick Studios. Also, I'm going to be showing you an exclusive teaser for an upcoming deck release by a secret designer that I will be reviewing in a future episode. I think it's going to get some people pretty excited. I'm also going to be giving away a copy of this secret deck way before the artist and producer has put it out for sale. Plus, I announced the winner of the Eye of the Ocean prototype, so stay tuned for that. And remember, for the best in cinematic reviews for the high-end tabletop gamer and collector, click like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. If there's one request I get often, it's to continue my top 10 decks of the year video tradition, the one I established over the first two years of this channel. Unfortunately, and I probably don't need to tell you this, but 2020 was a tough year. Global health crisis aside, it was odd for releases as well. The first three months or so were relatively active as a bunch of the decks produced before the shutdowns were making their way to consumers. But then there was a big lull in activity up until right, well, the end of the year when the mid-year Kickstarters were entering fulfillment. In the end, it left me with a pretty incomplete picture of the deck releases of the year and coupled with my Tale of the Tempest campaign consuming so much of my time and energy, the top 10 decks of 2020 video just never got done. It's safe to say that July 2021 is not a good time to be putting out a video detailing the best of 2020 anything. However, there was one release that almost assuredly would have been at the very top of my list. It's actually one of my favorite decks of all time. I'm going to be reviewing it for you in a moment. Before we dive into that, one of the many perks of running a channel dedicated to reviewing cool collectibles is that the producers of those cool collectibles like to send me advanced copies to showcase in the TGW style. I was recently contacted by one such producer and they sent me a deck to preview that I think is actually pretty damn cool and definitely worth showing off. I've been sworn to secrecy on who the designer is, but the deck will be released to the public for sale very soon. In the meantime, I'm gonna be giving away an advanced copy, brand new and sealed. And all you have to do is one, like this video, two, be a subscriber to this channel, and three, leave a comment on who you think the designer of this deck is. No worries, if you get it wrong, you'll still be eligible to win. All right, on to the review. These are the Devils in the Details decks, produced by Riffle Shuffle with design handled by Wittick Studios, specifically artist Sergen Vitakovich. Originally offered through a fall 2020 Kickstarter campaign, the initial offerings of the Devils in the Details decks are the ones seen here, Glamorous Gold and Sinful Silver. There was a rose gold version offered that featured the back design in rose gold cold foil. It was offered as a later stretch goal, but unfortunately I don't own that edition. It uses some slightly different artwork on the tuck and back design. Additionally, some gilded editions of the base decks were also offered, gold and silver gilding respectively. We'll keep this review firmly centered on the silver and gold editions. The decks come packaged in foil stamped premium cardstock tuck cases. There is only minor embossing on the main type, but the foil stamping does give the impression of raised texture, even if the thin layer of foil isn't technically embossed. The front of the boxes show off a fantastic array of horned humanoids in every style, mirrored on each side, winged figures with curled horns and arrow-tipped prehensile tails, bald figures with short sharp horns and pointy ears, fawn-legged satyrs harkening back to Greek mythology. In the bottom center, the portrait of the infamous traditional representation of the devil, complete with 
sinister goatee, oily hair, and massive collared cape, as if lit by the fires of hell underneath. It's really a complex and beautiful design, and I, I think it really shows off the impressive capabilities behind the artist, Sergeant Vitakovich, known to most as Wittick Studios. He's a great artist, and he's actually the one behind the Vanda Playing Cards Planets deck series. He's an accomplished designer with a brilliant knack for typography and illustration. There's a classical style to his work that invokes turn of the 20th century marketing, for lack of a better term. It's the perfect choice for a deck exploring devils and details, as you'll see. One side of the box reiterates the title, and the other side features the phrase, the more you look, the less you see, which I think means to promote deep investigation of the design, promising secrets that lie in plain sight. The bottom of the box includes the traditional ad copy and includes mention of the point of manufacture, Taiwan. More on that in a bit. The back of the box is a one-to-one -one representation of the back design of the cards, a gorgeous two-way composition of exquisite detail, featuring four mirrored corners showing off another bat-winged devil holding a trident. The large oval center area of the design includes a tangle of snakes slithering in and around the pitchfork implement, most often associated with the devil. Of course, the serpent is the first recorded manifestation of Satan in the Bible's book of Genesis. Looking closely at the design, the scales are well rendered and there's a sense of light and shadow created with the line width alone. Perched like a gargoyle at the top or bottom of the ornamented oval opening is another horned devil and within it, in the shadows, the first example of what is a fantastic motif that pays off the phrase on the side of the box. A secret devil drawn out of the shadows of the first one. I think this leads to the inevitable conclusion that there must be more hidden details in the deck, right? Spoiler alert, there is, and we'll talk about it in more detail because frankly, it's brilliant. The tuck flaps are held in place by metallic foil seals that include the deck numbering, and each edition was limited to a 2,666 print run size. The 666, of course, is a reference to the Mark of the Beast in the Bible's Book of Revelations. Riffle Shuffle also produced the successful 666 decks previously reviewed on this channel. I guess uh, somebody made a deal with the devil over there at Riffle Shuffle, <laughs> on some level anyway. Also, on the seal is a quote from actually one of my favorite movies from the late 90s. Quote, the greatest trick that the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Comment below if you know what movie that's from. Bonus points if you can name the character. Here's a hint, both names are acceptable. Taking the cards out of the box reveals the blown up snake pattern printed in foil on the inside of the tuck case. The card backs are as advertised on the box, beautifully printed in gold and silver metallic inks respectively, surrounded by an elegant thin white poker border. The deck includes no ad cards, something commonly seen with the decks printed out of Taiwan. There are two color swap jokers, one red and one in the corresponding metallic hue of the deck. They include a couple of dancing fools with horns on their cowls, frolicking back to back. The spot cards show off the beautiful just ever so serif index font. The pips are arranged in standard layout and they are custom and ornamented. In fact, within the details of the pips is a good place to start to search for more devils. Lo and behold, a hidden devil within a pip on every spot card. The aces keep the every card has a devil motif moving forward, beginning with the impressive and grand ace of spades, echoing the forms on the back design like the trident wielding winged demons or the uplit classic devil in the center spade, but including some additional forms hidden in the line work, like the two faces carved into rocky ground bearing lifeless trees. The other aces would be grand enough to be power aces on other decks and keep the gag going with different representations of the devil on each. The core cards feature noble men and women in Renaissance garb in poses and expressions that evoke the classical forms of works of the period, like Raphael's School of Athens or Michelangelo's La Pieta. Despite the classical inspiration, the illustrations remain true to Wittick's woodcut or etched style. The most brilliant aspect of the court cards, however, may simply be the fact that, just like the spot cards, there's a hidden devil in each one. This makes for a really kind of 
interactive scavenger hunt of sorts so you can easily spend several minutes trying to find the unique ways in which the designer has hidden representations of the devil into the details of the court card artwork sometimes it's a devil in profile hidden in a sleeve or the silhouette of a hat other times they hide in the creases and folds of fabric or the bristles of a feather it's really well done and my favorite aspect of the deck really tying the motif and artwork together organically and completely as far as the handling goes the decks feel good and serve as further proof of the dramatic improvement seen out of taiwan's printing facilities in the recent years it feels very much like a bicycle deck whilst avoiding the typical stiffness associated with decks produced in that part of the world. As of the publishing of this video, there are still some silver editions in stock, as well as the slight variant Rose Gold Edition available on Riffleshuffle.com. I believe the Gold Edition is actually slated to be reprinted as well. Congrats to Jared Hall, winner of the Eye of the Ocean prototypes. Contact me via Instagram to claim your prize. To check out my review of another deck series designed by Wittick, check out my review of the Planets decks by clicking on the video that will appear right here. I'm the Gentleman Wake. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again next time.